Welcome to our video on watercolor painting. In this section we are going to draw with watercolor paint. Uh, so some of the same principles apply, but this time we'll be using paint to finish and complete one section. So we had our original shoe drawing on a piece of paper and I have traced my design using a light box onto a watercolor piece of paper. So the first step, just like all the other steps, has been to erase down uh, an area that I'd like to paint. So I'm going to start by lightening my lines and it's really important with this technique because we don't want to have um, any blurring of our colors with gray pencil. Okay, so I've erased my pencil down and with watercolor what we have to really concentrate on is controlling the amount of uh, water that we're using on the surface of the paper. And the first step in our watercolor section is to complete a flat wash. A wash is a thin dilute amount of paint and water that creates a, a flat surface color. And in this uh, example you can see that we've started in this section with our areas of flat color, so one color per section, and that's our lightest base color, our lightest value and then um, we'll build on top detail and layer other colors as well. The first technique is all about creating that consistent, um, dense color. And watercolor dries a little bit lighter than the color that you paint. So I've got my palette here, and I'm right-handed, so I'm going to move my palette over to my right side with my water container. I need to have my palette clean and ready to go. I've already pre-mixed a few colors here, so I just had to activate them with water. What you do is you take your wet brush, you uh, engage the paint, the pucks of the paint a little bit, and mix them onto the white side of the palette beside your, your paint, trying to keep those pucks clean, but mixing a, a good amount of the wash so that you don't have to remix halfway through. You want to make lots and lots and lots of the color, whatever your base color is for your particular section, so that you don't have to worry about running out. So if you want to create a duller color, if your shoe isn't a super bright, vibrant color, the way to mix a duller color is to add its complementary value. So with my blue, I don't want it to be the most intense blue for my base color, so I'm going to go to my orange and I'm going to take a smaller amount of that and mix it into the color and that will immediately fill it down. So I can add a little bit more and I can test it. I have a tester here and each time I add the complement it drains the intensity, the brightness, so that I've got a more muted color. So I'm going to look for an easy section to start and the idea with this is that I'm going to create a puddle of paint on my page and I'm going to push the puddle around and keep that section wet. When watercolor dries it creates a ridge or an edge and the, the trick with this technique is we want to create nice smooth areas of color. If I make a mistake, if something doesn't go right, what you need to do is leave it. You need to leave it until it's dry for corrections. If you want to start making changes while it's wet, it changes the consistency and it doesn't dry evenly and you end up having a lot of areas that you can't fix in the end. So in my particular shoe I have some details so I'm actually trying to add in that as I go but make sure that I've still got a wet edge to play with. So I don't want to leave one area alone. I'm going to be careful that I'm doing this thoughtfully, but I'm at the same time taking um, some bold moves here to get this covered before it dries. The next step is to let it dry. You must leave it to dry. Um, the trick with watercolor is to work in layers and stages. So once we have one layer done, it must dry before I move on to the next step. Now I can build in um, more colors and a richer sense of texture and detail using a variety of watercolor pencil crayons. These are just like the pencil crayons you used for your previous section, but the only difference is when we add water to these pencil crayons, they actually engage and become paint. I'm going to add in where I want to have deeper shadows and layer in those colors softly with my pencil crayon. Again, never pressing hard to begin with, working in softly to enhance the design. Really this is just adding, 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 building details and layers and I've got a couple different colors I'd want to work with to make sure that my design is 
becoming a three-dimensional form rather than something that's just built from a flat, a flat wash of watercolor. So once you've got a section that you're happy with, that you've shaded, like this bottom section here, with a damp brush that you've removed the excess water on, you can lift up the pigment in the pencil crayon and move it across your area just like paint. So that will give you some nice smooth blending areas for shading. go overboard, you can dry off your clean brush and remove pigment to, to allow for that, that highlight to remain if you've gone a little bit too much. Once everything's dry, you can go back in with your watercolor pencil crayons, add a bit more texture and a bit more punch um, once everything has blurred in and dried properly. And this was Watercolor Techniques. Happy drawing! Job,